okay. So, no, wait. Listen. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're talking. Okay. Yeah, we're talking. So then she tells me about when she first gets her period. And then... Wait, wait, I so... I asked her to turn on the camera. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I am here with Kelly, uh, a.k.a. Steamy Chick. Um, I just had a vaginal steam. So we're going to start, start back, back, and oh, then okay, come okay. full okay. circle. So... Vaginal steams are obviously, I'm Haitian, for those of you who don't know, and that's something that we have in our culture, and so I was asking you, we were getting into, well, how did you get up into vaginal steams? Okay, so I learned about it from a Mayan abdominal womb healer, Marcia Lopez. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to take her certification programs, right? She has like, yeah. I think she might, I think she might. Okay. Okay. She's here and she has she has a center here in LA. We can go if you want to go. Okay. Anyway, so so she um so she mentioned vaginal steaming and I was like that's weird. Okay, I, I'm not hey I don't know anything about it. Okay, I was like that's weird. So then the next year my period was missing. My period was missing because I was like I I had gone through like a traumatic event mm-hmm. and my period just was gone. So then it was like two three months and I was feeling crazy and I realized like my hormones were really out of balance. So I was like. For the first time in my life, I was like, I think I should have a, I want my period to come. I feel like I, it would help balance out my hormones. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, well, how do I get my period to come? How do I get my period to come? And then I was like, hey, I should try a vaginal steam. So I tried a vaginal steam. Oh, but I couldn't find it anywhere. This was 2011. So I'm like, I'm, I live in LA, you know, so LA, you know, we have stuff, you know. So I Googling, Googling, Googling. Finally, I found a Korean spa that has it. So okay. I went there. I do the vaginal steam. The Korean ladies are talking to me. Everybody's around me. I, I, you know, I felt like, you know, very shy, you know. But I, I didn't, it was like, it was really, you know. So I did it. It was too hot. They kept on asking me, is it too hot? And I was like, I, I don't know, you know. I think it's fine, yeah. you know. But I didn't know, like, it's supposed to be just comfortable, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just, like, kind of sat there. I got through it. I went home. And my period came. I went to sleep. Day? I went to sleep. And my period came, like, a couple hours after I fell asleep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So then I was like, oh, that's cool. So then I noticed when I had my period, it was it was healthier. It was fresher. It smelled mm-hmm. better. And then the Korean ladies had been talking to me. Like, I was mortified they were talking to me while I was steaming my vagina. Because this is <laughs> like, I'm doing it in public. Like, they're just talking to me, you know? So um, I'm sitting there, and then they were like, why are you doing this? American women don't do this. And I was just like, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so then they were like, um, they were like, Korean women, we do this every month after our period. So, you know, so that we have a healthy period and we never have any can- So she said, so that we never get cancer and we never have mm-hmm. any problems. So I was like, okay, you know. So anyway, so my period comes right after steaming and my period is way better. It was better. Like, I just knew it was better. So were you doing this after that? Did you do it every month? So then after that, I started doing it every month after my period. Okay. And then, so I did it for years. And then when I was pregnant with my, with my, with my firstborn... I was on a Facebook group of like, you know, women that were going to be doing natural birthing and, you know, whatever. And so there was this Haitian woman and she was like, we do vaginal steaming after we give birth. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, I have vaginal steam, you know? And I had never told anybody about it, but I was like, oh, okay, cool. So then after I gave birth, I set up my vaginal steam chair and I started, I I vaginal steamed. And like, wait, what did you say about why why you guys do it? The Haitian? So there's (laughs) a couple reasons when we vaginally steam. One... Post-birth, it helps reduce the bleeding time. Um, it helps with clots. But then, like, we steam on a regular basis outside of birth because we want to have a tight vagina. Okay. <laughs> so, it got tight. Okay? So, what I've always heard is, like, after giving birth, your vagina will never be the same. You'll be loose after that. It'll be mm-hmm. big. Okay? After I did the steaming, because I did it for... So, I, so then, I, and the Ghanaian woman chimed in, and she said, well, we do it for 30 days straight. So, that's what I actually ended up doing. So, I steamed for 30 days straight. Ah. Girl, it was tight. My best friend, when she <laughs> had her baby, her mother did the, the traditional Haitian thing, and she said her ex was like, this was tighter than before. Exactly. I- it was. It was. It was tight. And and so, so now, for sexual reasons, right, that, mm-hmm. that's what everybody... Get your minds out of the gutter, you guys, because it's really important for women to have a tight vagina because the uterus can fall out. It prolapses. It prolapses uterus, yeah. And then also women complain of, um, or sometimes women have incontinence issues after mm-hmm. giving birth. And so that happens because the bladder and the uterus aren't properly in place. That all happens because the vagina skin isn't tight. 
So we actually have to have the vagina skin tight, the vaginal canal tonight okay. tight, so that it holds all the organs in place. And then the colon is also right there too. Mm -hmm. So that pushes all the organs back in, into place and then it holds them in place when the vaginal canal is tight. Ah. So it's important for medical reasons. So like a lot of women, like um, a lot of, especially US women, because vaginal steaming postpartum is a commonplace, um, a lot of women end up dealing with prolapse. And basically the prolapse, you know, if it's not, you know, if it's not, from childbirth, it will still come down later on in life as long as that canal. Yeah, my get great tight. aunt had a prolapsed uterus um, in her like late 60s, 70s, and yeah. she had to have it corrected. So what doctors do to correct it is they actually will they'll cut the vaginal skin and then they'll sew it back up tighter. Oh. So it's called a um, oh, it's what's it called? It's called a vag vagina lift. Oh, that's you know, what the vagina... But it's a surgical. It's surgical. Okay. You know? But then women do it like, oh, I'm doing a vagina lift for medical reasons, but then the joke, you know, really they want it to be tighter. tighter. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so but all they can do is just a steam. Well, steam... So steaming... So I didn't know at first, you know, like... But I, I work with women now. I work with a lot. I've worked with over 700 women doing vaginal steaming, and I've recorded the, the before and after and what the results are. And with prolapse, at first I didn't know, but it turns out prolapse... So I was completely prolapsed after I gave birth. My my uterus was completely all the way down. Really? Yeah, I had full, like a so so then the next thing that can happen is it can actually come out. But I had I had you know whatever the stage is right before it's actually coming out. I had that, and to think like thirty days later my uterus was completely back in place oh, and my vagina wow, and my vaginal canal was as tight as it had. That's ever a powerful been. testimony. Yeah. So then the first time I worked with a woman who was, I believe she was in her 50s, and she's like, yeah, you know, I have prolapse and, you know, so forth. I didn't know if it could correct it after so many years. And mm -hmm. she said, yeah, it goes back to when I gave birth. Turns out that she was, she steamed consecutively. She was still able to get it, that she was still able to get it tighter even after wow. so many years. Yeah. So That's amazing. Yeah. So... So you did this post birth for yourself, and so how did you segue from like self application and mm -hmm. self care mm -hmm. to wanting to have women mm -hmm. have access to this? Like, how did you make that transition? Okay, my friend Noni, she's a loud mouth. She came over and she was just like, "What's that witch chair in the corner, Kelly?" <laughs> <laughs> so when she started to tell all my friends. Kelly has a witch chair. Ask her about it. And I've, like, never told anybody about it. I didn't even tell my sisters about it. Like, you know, I just, it was something I had, Marcia told me about it. I just did it in secret, right? So Noni starts telling everybody about it. And, um, and so I started to tell my friends about it, you know, and I was like, yeah, it was really useful, you know, after giving birth. Like, it felt, it was, it was relieving because I also had, like, swollen skin and it helped all that skin. It relieved that, like, okay. immediately. I also had, you know, sore bones and it Im relieved that immediately, right? So just for those reasons, it was so amazing. And so I was telling all my other friends that were pregnant, like, hey, you should try this after giving birth. So then I was selling a tea, a tea for breast milk. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a doula gathering and I was like, yeah, I have this tea. And one of the doulas was like, I have these terrible periods. And she was telling me about them. And I was like, why don't you try vaginal steaming? So I, so she, so she was like, so I was like, yeah, you can make a, like a chair. And I was trying to tell her how to make a sauna. And she was like, I'll give you $100. Just make me one. I was like, okay. <laughs> so this woman had these 10 day long heavy periods with clots in them, okay? And I was like, that's, look, that's not what I had. I don't know if it can help you, but as far as I know, like I had been researching how you read the period. This is just like on another note, I was like interested in period health. And I found that in traditional Chinese medicine, they have a really old gyne book of gynecology, like hundreds of years old, and it talks about how to read the period. Okay. So clots are a sign of bad circulation. They're a sign that there's old residue in there. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know about that heavy bleeding, but really that heavy bleeding then happens because it tries to push it out. Okay, so she tells me about this, and so I was like, okay, there's old residue in there, there's clots in there, steam, three days in a row before your period. So, and then I made her, I made her this made chair, it. a vagina throne. <laughs> so she did it, and her, very, her period comes after that, and she didn't have the heavy bleeding, and it was wow. only five days long. And, and instead half. of having, instead of having, so she had more clots came out. Basically, all this old stuff came out when she had that period. How was her period after that? The so now her period is four days long, begins and ends on fresh red blood, no problems, and her headaches went away. She was having That's terrible headaches. So awesome. So, 
So then, okay, so that was the first person I worked with, but she was a doula. So she told everybody. And so then everybody, now people I didn't know wanted me to make them vaginal steam chairs. And I was just like, use her chair, you know? Like, just use hers, like, share, you know? That's not American. Like, Americans, we all want yeah, our own. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, we're germaphobes So you fast stuff. forward a couple years. I mean, this past year, in 2017, I sold over 550 saunas. I ship them all over the United States. Oh, wow. I am the world's leading distributor in vaginal steam saunas. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> but I know... This is, a, I didn't invent this. I don't pretend like I invented mm-hmm. this. This, so I was also, I was, I've been keeping track, right? Ever since the Guatemalan told me, and then I went to the Korean spot, I was like, where is this from? Did they copy that, the, you know, the Guatemalans, or did the Guatemalans copy the Koreans? I was wondering. I found it everywhere. I found the Haitians do it. Ghanaians do it. I found it in the South Pacific, in Palau, in Papua New Guinea. I found it in South in America, most, in, most in indigenous cultures, it's part of their routine. Even in European countries. So, so what really, happened to us here in America? Okay, so what happened was, everywhere where it's still in practice, mostly it's indigenous midwives that are doing it. Mm. So then I was like, okay, midwives. So I was researching midwives. Only 4% of Americans use midwives. Okay. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Okay, but how come even the midwives that are here don't do it? So we had to go into the history of Western medicine and gynecology. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out back in the day, only only midwives used to attend to women. Midwives were the doctors for women. Okay. So in the U.S., at a certain point, the doctors actually made midwifery illegal, and they decided that they wanted to take over, like delivering babies. So women went to the to the hospitals to deliver babies. They made midwifery illegal, and it's still illegal in nine states. For what is illegal Mm -hmm. in Nebraska? A woman in Nebraska can't have a midwife deliver her baby you know what I mean? so, mm-hmm. so it was very effective so they stomped out midwives and men took over this care without learning from the midwives any of their tools so then that's how so that's where it got lost and I w- and so I kind of put this together because I was realizing I met a, a, a Jamaican oh, so I have a Jamaican customer she got one of these and then her mom was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we used to do this. You know, we used to do this back home. She's like, I did it after I gave birth to you. And the girl was like, it blew her mind. She was like, how come you didn't tell me about this? Yeah, there's that whole thing of... Her? Why? What? what is the, I feel you like... Know. You probably know. Um, we become so westernized and we think it's, it yeah. doesn't have any real purpose. Oh, yeah. that's, that's stuff that we used to do back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's not even, the doctors, the doctor, they, they opened a clinic in that village and then they started saying, oh, you women shouldn't be using the bush medicine. You should be using medical science, right? But then the church chimed in and they oh, said, yeah. if you're using bush medicine, you're using voodoo. So that's evil. So both the church and the doctors, all men, were telling women what not to, to their use bodies. their own medicine. What to do with their bodies. So vaginal steaming, I found it now in over like over 30 countries all over the world. Women everywhere have always used this. Everywhere. Every single culture has used it. And so everywhere has their own herbs. Everywhere has their own mm-hmm. ways that they set it up. But women everywhere have always used this. This was gynecology before doctors, before male doctors took over gynecology and started using surgery. So doctors use surgery to treat everything. If you have... For, they give they give women so women with those heavy that woman that came to me with those heavy periods her doctor was like just do a hysterectomy he's like that's how we resolve that if we take out your uterus you, you don't, don't have, have any more problems, problems. Right. so they do it they, they suggest it for women with bad cramps they suggest it for anything if the uterus malfunctions if it has fibers if it has cysts then they say are you finished having children <laughs> for women in their you. upper 30s or 40s I mean that's it they yeah. say oh okay then let's just take it out then you won't have any issues that's weird. That's weird because well, I'm always, I'm always, uh, I always say to my friends who are considering it, I'm like, but you do know that our uter- our, our uterus and our all those things have a function outside of birth. But there's hormones that get produced in that area that we need, and yeah. now you're going to force yourself in an early menopause, yeah. and that means that you're, they're going to tell yeah. you and suggest hormone therapy, yeah. and then you're going to go down a new rabbit hole of symptoms yeah. and side effects and all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah, they'll take a woman's, they'll do a hysterectomy on like a 30-year-old woman, and then all of a sudden she has hot flashes and all this, you know, for sure. She goes into that early menopause. But, you know, like, okay, so I've talked to you know, a midwife or two, and they're always like, drink red raspberry tea, tone your uterus, right? When was your gyne- when has your gynecologist ever told you to tell me? Never, they'll never tell that. No, because because so so now do you know okay, so the history of gynecology gets really dark. But gynecology started by this guy, the grandfather of gynecology. He's the one that founded it. 
His name is Sims. J. Marion Sims. Oh, that's the guy who was testing on... He took his slave women and he started to cut them open. No anesthesia. And he learned how to cut women open. He killed lots of women. Okay? Slave women. And then he finally learned how to cut women open without killing them. So then he went up to New York and he started a hospital to train other men how to do it. And he started talking to to a society of white women. And he told them, come to our hospital. We'll treat your um, fistulas or whatever it is, you know. And he said, and we will give you anesthesia so you won't yeah. feel a thing. Yeah. And so they, he trained other, other doctors how to do it. And the white women came to the hospital and paid them to do these surgeries. And we're the descendants of that. Because yeah. we go to the gynecologist and if they suggest surgery and we pay them for it and they give us anesthesia, <laughs> you know, that, that's really, unfortunately, gynecology hasn't even really begun to study how to have a healthy uterus. No. What a healthy it uterus hasn't is. Evolved. What a healthy period is. They haven't even asked those questions. They've only further continued to study surgical practices. Mm-hmm. And then they also added in pharmaceuticals. Ph- uh, drugs. Pharma- yeah. yeah pharma- pharma- pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Exactly. So that's actually what gynecologists have. Those are their tools. So I'm not saying gynecologists are all evil like the one that founded it, but those are their only tools. So that's all you're going to have as the solution. But then... When you look at the research I've done of vaginal steaming all over the world, everywhere it's used for postpartum care. But then in Korea, they're like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it treats uterine cancer. In Haiti, you're supposed to do it after a woman's raped. In, um, in, in like, um, Navajo, you know, then I learned that Navajos do it, Lakotas do it, and all these different places they do it. And uh, in Switzerland, they do it to address UTIs. You know, in other places you can do it to address like bacterial vaginosis. In Turkey, they do it to bring back missing periods. You know, so like in different places, like it's known that you can use this to address different different issues. Mm-hmm. So this is this is woman's this is our gynecology. This was our medicine. This was the medicine that we had before doctors took over our medicine. It treats everything. So. Tell me a story that's moved you the most in terms of clients that you've worked with through the through the years. Like a story that really like touches yeah. home. Yeah. Um, so there was a woman. Um, her name's Patty, mm. and she came to me. She's not actually somebody who does like alternative medicine. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting. Her she had fibroids, and so her doctors um, did a hysterectomy on her, and they left her fallopian tubes and ovaries. And she, you know, she did, she was just completely compliant. They suggested that she did it, right? So then she went in for her one year checkup. And okay, so what was interesting was she was just like, they said it would be nothing, but it was, she's like, till now I haven't recovered yet. You know, she's mm. like, it was really a very big deal. It's a very evasive process. Exactly. And she's like, and they made it sound like it would be, you know, no issue at all. She said, I missed a lot of work. You know, she's like, I've been sore this past year. Like, I haven't healed all the way. So, like, you know, she was really, like, actually really surprised at how major of a surgery hysterectomy was because they had, didn't really warn her about that, right? Mm-hmm. So they left her her fallopian tubes and ovaries. She goes in for her one-year checkup. And they said that she had two softball-sized ovarian cysts on either side, and that those cysts, uh, that they needed to do another surgery to remove them, that they would go in to remove her, the rest of her uterus. And she was just like, I'm going to find another way. So she was praying and praying and praying. So she finds me in my vaginal steam sauna, and um, she saved up. She bought it. You know, like, I was just very touching. And so I told her, I said, she said, I don't have very much time. She said, because the, ske- the surgery is scheduled in a couple months. And, you know, number one, you don't have to do the surgery. You can reschedule it. You yeah, can cancel you, it. And it's we just a suggestion. Feel, we, we sometimes feel like the doctor has more authority the over authority. our body than I mean, we do. Why? why are we told we have to listen to them? Yeah. That that's the only responsible thing. So anyway, so I said, I was like, just steam every day. Every day steam, you know. And so she was steaming every day. And she said, first of all, that the pain went away. Then second, she was able to start having intimacy with her husband again because it had been so painful she couldn't. So I'm like, okay, these are all good signs, mm-hmm. right? So she goes in for her pre-op, for her pre-op. They're checking her, and then they were going to take her into surgery. She goes in for her pre-op appointment. They do an ultrasound, and there are no cysts there at all. They're gone. So that was such an interesting case study to me 
because be, her since her uterine cavity was gone, I didn't know if the steam would actually be able to make, make it. it. Yeah, but it did. You know. Then okay, an amazing one. I have a woman right now. She hasn't been able to get pregnant, so she's doing in vitro fertilization. Mm-hmm. So she's like, I have her steaming, and then she um, she went for her. Uh, they were gonna do an egg retrieval, mm-hmm. and then they were like, we can't do it. They were like, you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, like, it's just, it's pretty incredible. It's really incredible. So, like, um, so now I've, like, yeah. So, I've been, I I've been blogging have. about it. If you go to the Steamy Chick website, what I've been doing is I've been writing about these case studies because okay. they're pretty incredible. And so, some women I've even had write them, you know, just tell us all about your experience. One woman was bleeding. She was bleeding for 16 months straight. She was bleeding wow. nonstop for 16 months straight. She was working with her doctor. He was trying this. He was trying that. She couldn't stop bleeding. So she stopped bleeding within a, several hours of working. Wow. Was, you know what I mean? Like she was able to stop bleeding. I gave her the right herbs. So I tailor my herbs so that like, for example, I give her an herbal blend that stops excess bleeding. Okay. So let's talk about your, your blends. Okay. Um, we okay. have a few here. It's a great segue. Okay. I today um, did the, I think the cleansing blend. So let's, let's t- start talking about this first. Cleansing is dope. It's got roses in it. See the roses, see the roses? Okay. It turns out that there's a reason why women love roses. Why? Because they're good for us. They're good for our yonis. They're good for our, you know, they're good for our vaginas. So roses have like, they have a cleansing property and a tightening property. Okay. So. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it says on here, if you have a 28 plus day cycle, I guess that's why that was suggested. I have my cycle comes every 30 days, but I'm just That's happy perfect. to have my cycle every 30 days because there was a point I couldn't have a cycle. So every 30 days is normal. Anywhere between 28 to 30 days is a normal cycle. Okay. And then missing periods in oral contraceptive. So when women take the pill, their mm-hmm. period will go from red to brown. Okay. And that means there's, that the, the all the blood isn't coming out. There's old residue in there. So I recommend this blend for when women okay. are taking the pill. And postpartum healing. Yeah. This one is excellent for postpartum. What it does is it... Okay, so it helps to bring the circulation to the uterus, and it helps to get a uterine cleanse. So women need a uterine cleanse. Uh, okay, so the period is a natural uterine cleanse, mm-hmm. and then postpartum is a uterine cleanse. Those are the two times that women need that uterine cleanse. Okay. So now you don't use that while you're menstruating. You would use it before you're menstruating. Before? Yeah, so the signs of the signs... Okay, so the period is a, a, is a, is a monthly uterine cleanse. That is just natural. Okay. But if we don't take care of ourselves properly... We won't necessarily have a perfect cleanse. Just like if you don't drink water, you won't necessarily have a bowel movement. You can get constipated. Exactly. Okay? So that's what happens. And we don't have very good period care in this country because no. we say, you do anything even when you're on your period. And yeah. the reality is women should be resting, drinking tea, eating soup, you know, and doing mm-hmm. things that are healthy for the uterus. But we have terrible period care. And so women often have signs of old residue. So signs of old residue are going to be brown blood, black blood, um, clots, clots um, <laughs> blood chips. Sometimes women have dried blood chips in there. And then cramping happens. If any of that is in there, the cramping happens to try to contract that stuff out. Okay. And then sometimes the uterus will also bleed heavily to try to push it, clean it out. out. So if women have that, then this is the right so this for is them. the cleansing. They steam beforehand and then it helps them to get that full uterine cleanse. So would you also suggest that they steam afterwards? Steaming after is perfect too because it makes sure that nothing is left else behind. Is left you got it. Yeah, because I know, like, in Haitian culture, you, we usually do the steam after yeah. to help to make sure everything is out. And that's perfect, because that's preventative, right? So that means that you won't have any issues going further. Um, but then when women do have these terrible cramps, then it's useful to add it beforehand as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. So then we have the disinfecting blend. I love talking to Haitian, because it's natural to you. You know, like, when you, when you learn it, it's not, like, it's not foreign. It's not know? foreign. Like, right now, a lot of people are freaked out, like, can we do that? Are we allowed to do it? You know, but if you've learned it, like, even my little girls, like, my four-year-old was like, mommy, when do I get to do it? I was like, you can try it. You know, so she tried it. <laughs> she was like, it's cozy. You know, like, <laughs> but she'll always feel comfortable healing herself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She'll feel comfortable. We need to take over, like one of the things that came out of another conference I just came from is that we need to take control of our healing yeah. and, and speaking up and owning how we heal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, disinfecting. You have your bacterial yeast, viral infections, um, anything accompanied with cervical mucus. Okay. So, I think the only type of 
cervical mucus that women should have, the healthy stuff is clear. It's okay. Like that clear nectar. If it's white, yellow, green, blood tinted, it can be smelly. Mm -hmm. All of that means that like that there's excess mucus in there. There's mm -hmm. too much dampness in the uterus. It's excess, okay? And that excess mucus, um, bacteria loves, loves it. it. Proliferates it in it. Yeast loves it. Virus He's a man with HPV that passes it on to women, right? Mm -hmm. One, he has sex with this woman and she doesn't get HPV. But then he has sex with this woman and she does. Why? The, but I, One of them has different. mucus. Yeah. One of them has all the excess mucus in it. It's, it's, it makes it easy to be home to that virus, right? So it's not good to have a lot of the excess mucus mm -hmm. in it. Just like when you blow your nose, that mucus, you don't, you don't want it coming out all the time. No, you don't. And you would never touch it. It's yeah. got germs in it. <laughs> exactly. So it's the same. So now this blend I recommend for women who have infections or that just have that excess mucus. Do it day after day until you pull all of that mucus out. So now the thing about this type of cleanse is that um, sometimes women, like sometimes all kinds of stuff comes out. There's one girl, she calls me, she's like, the green god monster just came out. She's like, I don't even, I've never seen anything green in there. She's like, it looks like Slimer from the Ghostbusters. You know, like it can mm -hmm. be really cool. But... I was like, thank God it's out of yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> better out than in. She was dealing with chronic bacterial vaginosis. So she did 10 days, and then she still had more mucus coming out. So I was like, okay, do a couple more days. Just continue until all, any irregular mucus is out of there. You only want the clear stuff. So then um, so then she did that. She's never had bacterial vaginosis again. It never came awesome. back again. She had been having it twice a month for years. She's and that's the one that's again. the worst because that smell... <laughs> it's the smell that keeps on giving and it's the silent smell like let's be honest with bb you think you're good you're like sniffing you clean up like yeah i'm good and it shows up in the worst place when you're having sex and it's like oh i'm not good <laughs> i'm speaking from experience <laughs> you know? Keeping it real. Yeah, like, you know, stuff. like it was like, oh, I, 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 I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Oh, it's, oh my God, that's so hilarious. Yeah, yeah, because it can be in there. It's cervical mucus, you know. It's cervical mucus. It can be in the uterus too, though. So when women steam, actually, sometimes this is interesting because sometimes women will steam because they have these the excess mucus, and they steam and they go, oh no. It gave me a, a yeast infection. I said, well, what do you think is the yeast infection? They're like, because more is coming out now. More mucus is coming out. I'm getting cottage cheese mucus. I was like, good. It Keep on steaming. Out. It needs to come Pull out. Pull it all out. Because after so many days, then it's all out. Yeah, but sometimes, I think even doctors give conflicting information. It's they like, do. oh, if more is coming, it's producing that situation. So yeah. I feel like that's where the intuitive part of yeah. like, that's heartily why I'm yes baby I like your raw it's not just raw foods is recompassing your intuitive power yeah. tapping into your raw potential yeah. so that that compass is Ooh. there so you know yeah. this 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 is good or maybe this isn't good but yeah. a lot of us aren't in tune with our bodies yeah. to even know if it's healing or it's not yeah yeah you know what I try to like we know a lot about the nose though we know we know a lot about nose mucus so I'm just like you think about it and you take a shower and all that steam helps to decongest you. You don't say the steam from the shower made that mucus. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> it's true. It's just true. You never say that. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I tell women, they're like, this gave me a yeast infection. I was like, no, no, it didn't. No. It pulled that mucus down and out and keep on going, <laughs> you know? So. Okay. So then in your next blend, we have the gentle short cycles under age 13. Or so anyone who's under the age of 13, interim bleeding, fresh spotting. Okay, so so this blend has herbs in it that help to stop bleeding. Okay? okay. So actually, girls who start their period before 13, that's a little bit young, you know, and they can use this blend. It will help to strengthen the Oh, uterus. so I remember when we were talking about how like, you need to make sure it's a true period story. So. I think that might have something to do with that. <laughs> that was an interesting story. Yeah, so... Um, I was telling her earlier that my menstrual cycle was a big um, celebration and like rituals and one of the things that someone told my mom was like we need to make sure it's a true period so they made her give me a cup of lemon juice and because I guess maybe I was too young because I had my menstrual cycle when I was 11. It's not, it's not bad, but yeah, I mean it does Relatively speaking, my mom didn't have her menstru first menstrual cycle until she was 15. But hers started on brown blood. Probably. Everybody after 13, it'll start brown or with cramps. Okay. 
interesting. They made her drink pure lemon juice. <laughs> Even though it was supposed to be diluted, it was supposed with water. to be diluted. But the person who told my mom <laughs> didn't specify take the, some lemon juice and put it in water. So I literally drank a cup of le- like an eight, like a full cup of lemon juice. What face did you make? <laughs> it was it was more like there's a belt in front of my like because I again I wasn't a good medicine taker when it was nasty. Oh, so, so there was a there was a belt like you need to drink this. You're supposed to drink this. We need to make sure that this is real. And then after that happened, then like the, there was a follow up call. Like, did you give it to her? Like, yeah, I gave her all of it. She didn't want to take it. Why? Because you know it was like, oh no, you're supposed to put water in it. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> and it did cut my period. I didn't bleed for two days. But that, if you know, if so, one of the tricks is if you want to cut your period short, yeah, is you drink lemon juice. I did not know that. Yeah. Mm hmm. I can cut my period short by drink, drinking Stop lemon. it. Yeah. Lemon or lime, it'll cut it. What about, okay, so what about if somebody has like heavy bleeding or their period's going for too long? I Do think it'll reduce it because, time? okay, so I can speak yeah. like right now. Um, I've, I've been. Sometimes, mainly I do like apple cider vinegar um, water in the morning, but right before my cycle, I was doing lime and I had like these gigantic limes. So it was like like a quarter cup of lime in my glass of water. Yeah. And my menstrual cycle is usually four to five days. Yeah. And this menstrual cycle was two days. Okay. And I really feel like the only thing that changed was I was drinking the lime. And it would, but, but. I feel like it made it flow more because I am not a cramper. I'm I'm blessed. I can't relate to cramping. And when I cramp, I'm always questioning, like, back to the compass thing. I'm like, okay, what's going on, body? And I was cramping this menstrual cycle. But it was two days and it was finished. So I was like, well, you know. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. So lemon, lime, well, because when I did that, two days, nothing. And then the third day, it came back. I'm so interested. And please, anybody do it and comment how it works. Hey, there's two people watching. (laughs) Hi. I wasn't sure. (laughs) We have... Okay, so there's so many people that have periods that last for like 10 days or 14 days. Well, I used to be... So I'm interested for anybody out there who has those who manages to see this, try drinking... um, Try this. Try the lemon. Does it stop? Well, I'll say... Okay, so let me go back because I was starting to tell you my menstrual story. Okay. So... One, after that, my menstrual cycle was very irregular. Um, it came one month. It didn't come one month. Okay. It came one month. didn't come three months. It okay. came one month. didn't come six months. And my mom was like, something's wrong. Okay. And then she went to the pediatrician and was like, hey, her menstrual cycle's all over the place. And the, my doctor, Dr. Go, was kind of like, well, you know, she's young. It's probably just trying to regulate... And lucky for my, my, for me, my mother pressed and pressed and pressed. She's like, no, when my menstrual cycle came, it came. It didn't do all of this flip-flopping. And six yeah. months is a long time to go without a menstrual cycle. And when she pressed the issue so much that they did blood work, and my prolactin levels were out of this world. So prolactin is a hormone that you produce when you're mainly when you're pregnant. It's always there, but it rises when you're pregnant. And it's the, it's the hormone that causes your menstrual cycle to stop. Okay. And your breast milk to pre- be produced. Interesting. I had breast milk. No way. Yeah, that's how I can gauge now, like my holistic living thing. If I need to, like, take my Vitex or stuff like that. Because you will get breast milk. Yeah, I can squeeze and it probably shoot across the rooms. No way. <laughs> yeah. And are you a mom? No. Gosh. Because my body, because my prolactin levels can get so high. Okay. So I think when they tested me, it was like in the 200s. Okay. And it's supposed to be like 10, 13. So why was it so high? So when they, when they once they saw that level, they're like, we should check to see if she has a pituitary tumor. And that's when they found out that I had a benign um, pituitary tumor. They call it a prolactinoma because it causes the prolactin to rise. Wow. So, my menstrual cycles were erratic. Um, like, they weren't always... Thin. They, they put me on birth control and stuff, but they were also long. I normally would have, like, a seven to nine day period, and it was seven to nine days. It wasn't, like, seven days, and then spotty. Um, it was heavy. Yeah. So, how I was able to come down to... Because yeah. I just told you I'm Tell now me. down to four to five. Yeah. One, I changed my diet. Okay. I went plant-based. One, because I wanted to be able to, like, be able to have a menstrual cycle 
and not have to be on birth control because they put me on birth control in middle school. And then I started doing research and I was like, whoa, long-term use of birth control causes sterility. I want to be a mother in the future. And so first thing I did was I did this wrong. This is for people who are trying to do things holistically. Okay, my period's on now, so I'm going to try it. That's Tisha. Hey, everybody. Hi. Okay, so I just saw some stuff going on, and we're, like, talking to each other. But if you guys say something, we'll, I'll try to look. So I did my transition. I always tell people when you, if you've been on medication for a while, you can't just stop cold turkey. Okay. Because your body is now addicted or used to the medication. What I did was... I got off of birth control cold turkey. I was on, like, I went from pills to like, I'm tired of taking pills and they have the patch. So I was like, yeah, just give me the patch and it'll make me do the whole period thing. So I went off the patch and had a 30 day period. Oh, no. So then I went to my gynecologist and I loved him and he was always giving reality checks. And he was like, you know, you can't just get off of it because your body's like now like really used to this thing, hormones being present and you can't just go cold turkey. So it's like, okay, so I got back on the birth control, and then I called a naturopath, and I told him I just transitioned vegan and what I was trying to do, and he put me on an herbal protocol. So for a while, I was on the herbal protocol, birth control, and then I was supposed to wean myself off the birth control. So then I weaned myself off the birth control, and then I was able to have my menstrual cycle monthly without any medical intervention in with the herbal protocol okay. but then I weaned myself off the, the herbal. herbal protocol and now here I am 16 years later I can have I have a menstrual cycle every month so like this is like this is the perfect example of like you are a master over your own body yeah you're understanding what you need you were able to figure it out. It can be different, but also you have proper period care. Yeah, like, you know, like. and, and then, so how did I reduce my days more? So after I went plant-based, I lost days off my cycle. So instead of being nine, it might be six to seven. Okay. Then I changed what I was using. Prior to like really going in with everything I use, it has to be natural. I was an always person. Always was thin. I could wear it all the time. Da -da 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 -da. You know, like it was dry because I had like the sensitive vagina that if it was too wet, the pad got wet, I would get a rash. I, I always say I have a diva vagina. <laughs> like you just look at it wrong and you're just like, ah! <laughs> you know, it's true. Like I like. So going back to that whole connection, so um, I switched from always and went to natural pads, knocked out some more days. Really? Just like that? Yeah, because what I found out in my research later yeah. or during is that those, like, you know, always has like those little beads in there and then the bleach, those things actually make you bleed more. Oh, interesting. They cause more hemorrhaging. So you use natural pads. So I use natural, okay, so my transition with natural pads have changed over the years. So yeah. at, at first it was just natural, like nature care and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And then I was like on this whole like hot yoga thing and you don't want to use, and I wasn't, wasn't necessarily big on always using, I didn't like natural tampons. Yeah. I didn't like them. Okay. So I was more of a pad person. Yeah. yeah. And then I got on this like, I was doing I did Bikram every day for like nine months, and so like that, and I didn't take any days off. I'm very different with that now, and so I got a Diva Cup. Okay. And so Diva Cup menstrual cycle stayed the same, and then because of the work that I was doing in Haiti, and me thinking about like my carbon footprint, particularly with menstrual cycles, and I'm going to put a new plug in, um, and we're going to have you talk to people while I plug this in. I also do um, reusable sanitary napkins now. Reusable. Oh, so cloth, the cloth ones. Yeah, the cloth ones. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are dope. Yeah. So give me a second. She's gonna keep talking to you because I don't want to lose you. And so we're charging this phone as we're talking. I'm just fascinated. I'm fascinated with how you were able to. I, I mean, I love it. You know, you're able to figure it out. But then I'm wondering, did you use? I'm wondering if you use vaginal steaming as well. Well, that's what I'm thinking now because I don't. I, I mean, I've vaginal steamed here and there, but I'm wondering if that could then. I would love to have a two-day period every month, but I also think my period has reduced because I've also changed um, my approach to my menstrual cycle 
Oh, we're all here. Yeah. Oh, we might have to move our setup. Okay. I've changed my um, I've changed my routine. Like I rest on my menstrual cycle. I don't practice yoga on my menstrual cycle. Um, and so the first two days of my menstrual cycle, I no longer practice yoga. Yeah. Um, and then when I do come on the third or fourth day, I practice a restorative flow that I learned. So how did you learn? How did you learn you're supposed to be resting during your menstrual cycle? Well, I, that's controversial. I, I tell that to women, and they're just like, I was, and I was that person because I'm a like go 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 yeah. Sagittarian, like yeah. Um, you're Sagittarius. I am, but it wasn't it wasn't sustainable for me, and um, like going to that compass thing, me just tuning in more. I realized I needed a more yin lifestyle to my very yang lifestyle because everything of i'm a fire sign like it's like hot hot fast fast and i was starting to have like backward steps in terms of like me living holistically and like living with disease yeah. you know because i i always tell people like i'm relatively healthy like although i look healthy i am living the lifestyle i live because i do have an autoimmune disorder. I do have polycystic ovary syndrome. I do have this tumor. The tumor is a size and where it's located that they're not willing to have surgery because the risk for surgery is higher than the symptoms. And I don't want us to lose. Hey, do you think it really worked? Because I'm scared to use the cloth pad. No, honestly, like I've had clients, okay, I don't want us to lose questions. I've had clients who've switched out on the cloth pad and to cloth pads or to natural, natural, um, sanitary napkins and it's made a difference now I know diva cup that's a whole different you have to have a whole different relationship with your your menstrual cycle and all that stuff because when I first heard about it I was like mm, I don't know about that but then here I am telling you that I do a diva cup every month <laughs> or it's not every month now because I, I again I, I like I like my my pads and stuff like that oh and she has Okay, so Ayana says that she's used it and it's been helpful. Awesome. Um, and she's getting a plug, so I don't want to so ask your questions. And we're almost going to be all hooked up. Okay, I'm so glad you're talking about periods. Yeah, because periods are my thing. Because I had a real struggle. And I will say that when I am bad with my diet, I'll get cramps. I'll get a heavy, ugly menstrual cycle. When I'm clean with my diet, my menstrual cycle is beautiful. I don't feel it. Um, it's, it's, I actually, I look forward to my menstrual cycle because I fought so hard to get my menstrual cycle. And I'm sharing, I'm writing a post on the, the whole like yoga restorative practice. So you're asking, okay, that was the question. Okay. Okay. The controversy. Some okay. people say you shouldn't do anything on your menstrual cycle. Some people say you, you should, should do everything. Yeah. What I found out. Okay. I didn't even get to tell you about my perfect period theory. Yet. Okay. But what I found out is that when women learn how to take care of themselves during the period. Okay. There's certain things that they need. I call it proper period care. Mm -hmm. Then they are able to naturally resolve probably 60% of all menstrual cycle issues and pain will be resolved if women just properly take care of themselves. I agree. Okay. So, I have women, I t you know, I have them do vaginal steaming to address, you know, their issues. But then I was just like, but they're still not taking care of themselves on the period. If they're not doing that, it's like impeding mm -hmm. their ability to get, you know, healthy. So I had, um, I asked my colleague, Chris Gonzalez, she's an acupuncturist. She's a steamy chick acupuncturist. <laughs> I told her, I asked her to make a class on proper period care. So she did a class, it's called Moon Medicine, self -care, Radical Self-Care Practices for the Perfect Period. Because when you learn how, when women learn to rest, and when they learn to drink the tea, rest is and drink so warm important. Food, it's recharging. Nothing goes 100%. So the uterus has to recharge so that it can be strong. Exactly. You know, these women, okay, so short cycles. Women with short cycles that are like 27 days, 26 days, 25, and, and shorter, that's too short. The menstrual cycle is supposed to be at least 28 to 30 days. But women have short cycles because the uterus gets tired. It's a fatigued uterus. And the way that it charges and gets stronger is for them to rest. rest but we don't the know how to rest. And I feel like 
in our desire to prove to men that we are just as strong as them. We that weaken we, ourselves. We've weakened ourselves. We've lost we've lost the understanding of that there's so much power in our femininity in our softness and then in our softness there is so much strength okay now you're one of the you're yang you said you like to go 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 right but like you learned that you need to stop and sleep at night right yeah it's the same thing with the menstrual cycle it's like yeah it, it's, it doesn't make you weak because you need to sleep at night no it doesn't it makes you strong it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> like you, need, you don't sleep like you're not gonna make it through the next day you're not gonna make it through the next day like you can stay up all night and you're gonna make it until like what one o'clock two i mean you it's just downhill right so it's the same with the menstrual cycle when women rest during the menstrual cycle it charges their uterus, okay? It charges them. They're strong now. They have a strong and when you core. Come, when you come back from the rest, you're so much stronger. stronger. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So when women rest during their period, it, they have a spring afterwards. When the skin looks nicer. The hair looks shinier. Like, it's a natural spring. So, like, actually, in traditional Chinese medicine, they say, Say that's what uh, that's a woman's eternal uh, eternal fountain of youth. Yes, fountain mm -hmm. of youth is that resting time, and, and then that it renews a woman, and she had every month she has a chance to completely renew her body. Mm -hmm. You know, and like and her youth. But we're not. It was unfortunate is we're not taught this, mm -hmm. and we're now dismissive of these things mm -hmm. because we think it's old, it's um, antiquated, it's like you were saying, it's voodoo. Yeah. Um, but why not? Like, I think we need to like rebrand it. Like, how about instead of like you should rest during your period, how about you have a four day vacation? You have a four day spa yeah, vacation or self care. Where like, you get to just pamper yourself. Yeah, you know? like, I think it's so important, girl. I will save up. I'll just be like, I'm, I'm gonna do a foot massage. I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna even if even if there's something that I'm like want to meditate about, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna write that down. When I'm on my period, I'm gonna sit and think about that and meditate about that. You know, I just save there's so up much now. power it's my vacation. in yeah. that time that we're not honing. I know for me, like with my yoga practice, that's where I've been able to like really. So when I was I was doing a Bikram challenge that turned from 30 days to seven months hardcore. If I missed a day, I would do doubles. <laughs> you know. Um, and it was like, if I missed a day, I remember, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Like my ex was looking at me like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? And I was sick. And he was like, you know, baby, you were I, sick. But I was sick. And he was like, babe, you should stop. I was like, no, I'm going to yoga. And he was looking at me like, why won't you listen to me? And I was like, I need my yoga. <laughs> well, you were going hard. I was going hard. What happened? Why did, what, what you, happened? you know what? It showed up. I was going too hard. It was no longer restorative. And I had like. I have now, I teach band syndrome because of it. I had all these injuries that happened because I wasn't giving myself the proper time to yeah. rest. Okay, yeah. And my menstrual cycle got wonky. Yeah. So it, it affected your menstrual cycle. Yeah. yeah. And some people be like, well, how do you know that? So time, when women, so a lot of times when women over-exercise or when they exercise during their period, they'll have bad periods, you know, or they'll have a lot of pain or whatever it might be. But, okay, so, so I have worked with over 700 women. Mm -hmm. using vaginal steaming and one of them I recorded what the period was like at first okay and then how the period changed month after month doing the vaginal steaming now I'm innovative with it so I do cleanses you can do a 10-day cleanse I'll have people do before and after their period I, based on what the starting situation is mm -hmm. then I tailor the vaginal steam treatment and I tailor the herbs okay so I actually call this Paris steam hydrotherapy this okay. is like a new field of women's medicine as far as I'm concerned like and I think that we need to I, I'm working on clinical studies so that we actually can say awesome. this is that's, what that's what we this need medicine that's what we need the doctors can say oh this has no proof case studies are proof we actually have a lot of proof that these this really helps women you know uh, but then we just have to take it further and do those clinical studies so that Western medicine can accept it. Exactly. So that it can be taken to all of the people that are under Western medicine. You know, exactly. All the women that are being cared for them. But anyhow, okay, this is what what, hap what happened. Was the first several people that I sold vaginal steam sonus to, all of a sudden, after two to three months, their periods looked like, like mine. I have a four-day long period, begins on ends on fresh red blood, and there's nothing else. There's no cramps. There's no discomfort. There's no headaches, right? So I was just like, why do their periods look like mine? Like, that was crazy to me. But what I realized is everybody had this old residue. And when this old residue came out of the uterus, basically the period looked the same. So I'm going to ask this question because I have some yeah. friends who have um, 
really painful menstrual cycles and I think I have some friends who have endometriosis okay. and that's a big thing that's going on right now okay have you worked with any clients with endometriosis endometriosis and has the vaginal steaming helped with yeah. the pain yeah. and stuff like that yes so endometriosis going further from this old residue buildup endometriosis happens when the uterus is so filled with old residue that the blood can't even flush and the woman can't even have a period anymore so she has black blood is coming out so the cervix still open so she can have her period but the blood can't even flush through her uterus it's so packed with this old residue that only black blood comes out and then because so then the endometrium lining of the uterus is supposed to grow again mm -hmm. after the period well it can't grow in there there's no room so it grows Goes just any place. old place yeah. so these women with endometriosis have very painful periods usually and they usually have black blood is, is like the indicator so what we do is they steam until they can get to this clean uterus and they don't have pain anymore and also the lining and the scar tissue it all stops growing all over the body it still it will grow in the uterus We're supposed so to grow. my theory and this is just a theory we have to test it you know but I've had success with enough women that I really believe this is what's going on and that's that's my understanding of, how, of what's taking place my theory is that um, is that endometriosis is just really advanced old residue buildup okay. you know because women haven't gotten their their period cleansed you know because of this improper period care because women aren't resting because women don't know what to eat you know okay all these problems wait you have some other blends i don't want to forget your blends okay okay so we did disinfecting so we gentle. gentle we talked about underage periods but we didn't talk so gentle is for the short cycles women who have short cycles they're uh so 27 days or shorter from period to period that's mm -hmm. actually a short cycle their uterus gets fatigued and it actually just lets go of the blood. Uh, it's actually an early period. It's not okay. a short cycle. So it's it's an early period. The period the, the period is regulated by the moon. It's supposed to be every 28, 29 days. Okay. If it comes at 21 days, that means the uterus just got fatigued and it lets go. Okay. So uteruses get fatigued when women don't rest during the period. They get fatigued when, with overactivity. They can get fatigued with over anxiety or with a lot of stress, you know. But um, but this has herbs in it that help to lengthen that cycle back to that 20, 28 days. But, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Like I always want my women with short cycles to use these herbs. They will lengthen the cycle, but she also has to rest during her period. These women just need more rest. Yeah. The, their uterus is tired. But isn't know? that a good problem Because to have? they're tired. Isn't that a good problem to have? To rest? You need to rest more? Rest more. Well, women are like, I love that I have permission to take a nap today. You know, I never have given my, myself permission to take a nap during my period. You know, it's just like, yeah, you have you have permission. We have permission. You got. If anything, we have permission. Okay, so there's a question. <laughs> People want to know who you are, what's your name, when where they can find you. Okay, I'm Kelly. Garza. I'm the owner of a company called Steamy Chick, and I'm the world's leading. <laughs> oh, we were, we were, we were, so um, I'm not sure if you heard that, so she's going to say that again. I'm Kelly Garza. I'm the owner of the company Steamy Chick, and I am really the only person in the world that's studying vaginal steaming. So, um, so I have worked with over 700 women and recorded the results. And I um, have found vaginal steaming in over 30 countries and recorded all the different countries where it's practiced. So on Facebook, if they want to find you, are you under? Yeah, you? I'm at facebook.com backslash steamy chick. And if you go there, then I'll direct you to our secret group where we talk about vaginal steaming. Yeah, and period. I love that we talk me. about it all day long, yeah. all day long. <laughs> okay. And then we have the cooling blend. So sometimes women have night sweats, and like night sweats can happen at any time. Girls, like teenage girls, will be having sometimes night sweats, I get night sweats. Yeah, especially on the period. What happens is like the kidneys get tired. The kidneys are in charge of keeping the body cool, and if there's not enough kidney tonic, so when the woman's producing extra blood, her kidneys have to give all of that like hydration to mm -hmm. the blood, you know, and so the kidneys can get tired, and so when they or they can get dry, you know, it's called kidney indeficiency. So that will give a woman night sweats. So these herbs are have kidney tonics in it and herbs that can help to cool the woman's internal body temperature okay. down to what it should be. So another thing that can happen if there's excess heat in the body are hot flashes. Okay. 
And then um, vaginal dryness or skin dryness, hair dryness. All that happens when the woman doesn't have enough like mo- moisture, moisture in her kidneys. Basically. Okay. It's like a dehydration issue, but specifically to the kidneys. So anyways, that vaginal dryness, um, it is associated with women like in menopause or postmenopause, but it happens all the time. So anyways, this has special herbs and it has seaweeds in it and like other herbs that are going to help to nourish a woman. And like women complain, you, you may not, but postmenopause women, they say the vaginal dryness can be so yeah, bad that they have a hard complaints. time walking. They can't mm-hmm. even, you know, or that it makes sex painful or whatever. This, it treats the vaginal dryness like that. Okay. And then it will also return, um, it will tr- return women's libido very quickly too. Ah, <laughs> so we want the cooling one. All of them do because they bring circuit. Okay, so libido. Vaginal steaming does everything that foreplay does. It makes it warm down there. Makes it warm. It makes it wet down there. <laughs> And it brings circulation. You think massage, touch, all of that is bringing circulation to that area. So what it does is it releases a woman's libido, <laughs> you know. So, but then it's also so I learned. So I met um, I met a woman. She works with um, she works with survivors of sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. So then she works with this Haitian woman, and the Haitian woman was like, "So then this girl says, should we do vaginal steams for the women we're working with?" And the Haitian woman was like. That's first the first thing you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I learned. So I didn't know that, but I learned that in Haiti, in Haiti, that it will be used if a woman has sexual abuse as well, which makes perfect sense because you think you can't really get to the core in any other kind of way. This, a man's sperm can get to the core of a woman, or even if a past relationship might have been a bad relationship mm-hmm. or whatever it might be, a man's sperm goes to the core of a woman and it holds an energy there. Well, vaginal steaming can get to that core and release it. And nothing, and re- exactly. Yeah. So it's very healing for women. So now, do you want to hear my next theory? My next theory, my next medical theory, is that vaginal steaming actually releases oxytocin in women. And I came to this because I found this study where they were stimulating the cervix on rats. And no comment about that. But they were stimulating the cervix. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, <pause. laughs> I, I don't even know. <laughs> but anyways, um, they found that it, the the rats had a two, um, their oxytocin was over two hundred percent higher if they stimulated the cervix, and the conclusion of the study is that women have that women human women have inputs in their cervix that communicates to the brain yeah. that will then have a release of that can release oxytocin. Well, oxytocin is the love hormone, and it's also the hormone that is it's involved in breast milk production. And it's basically, you know, like when you just fall in love with somebody and you're walking around like, hi, and you can't stop smiling, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, that's it. That's that hormone. It's the oxytocin. And it also makes women feel relaxed. Yeah. Like if you women sleep. So, so I just did a steam and if it's on my Insta stories on Instagram. And if you saw how I was posting, talking prior to the steam and I was talking afterwards, before I was like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, I just did the steam, and I felt really good. So, and I think it's because it's, I think it's because, so the steam goes up the vaginal canal, and then it touches the cervix. Yeah. I think it's stimulating the cervix, which is then telling our brain Producing. to release oxytocin. Probably so. So women get relaxed after. I was very relaxed. Yeah. So there's a question, can you steam at home? Yes. Yes. So I sell a vaginal steam sauna. You want me to pick that up? Steamy, steamy chick. I think they could even see it. Can you guys see it? Steamy chick is the think. number oh, they one. Can. We're that far in. Steamy chick's the number one distributor of vaginal steam supplies. So I sell these saunas. I ship them all over the United States, and I think that every home should have one. Now I got this because I found this. Uh, this Eritrean woman contacted me. She's like, I'm from Eritrea, and I'm so glad to find this because we have this back in our home country. But she's like, it's nowhere here, you know. And so she said at every home has like a, a basically an adobe behind it for steaming. And all the women have that. And I was like, every home has one. I was like, that makes sense. Yeah, in Haitian culture growing up, I, I think it's getting lost now. Like we always had what we call a vase. And the vase was, because um, even like the ritual behind, I remember learning how to clean my vagina. You know, like there's a way to clean your vagina. And there's herbs that you would put in. And, um, and you needed a vase. <laughs> What's a vase? It's it's a it's like a it's I don't know what it's made with it's it's yeah. white and it has a blue trim but then you put your steam your water and put your herbs in there and so you so it's and sometimes we do urine therapy but that's so a whole a different yes it's ceramic 
Um, metal. Wait, what did you say you do? Sometimes we do urine therapy. That's a whole different conversation okay, because okay. like there's different ways to apply urine therapy, but okay. you would pee in the water and use that to clean because there's properties in your urine that will that are also. And then with urine therapy, You're people it Haitian stuff people now. well well. <laughs> Haitians don't do this per se. Maybe wait, I don't know. I can't remember right now. But you, when you're in therapy, you would drink your first pee in the morning. But that's a, like I said, that's okay, a whole different, a whole, whole different conversation. Okay, okay, okay. I have someone who's a specialist on that, and I'm going to probably Ooh, talk to him next. Okay, okay. Because he was trying to tell me to do it, and I was like, I can't. Okay, so you use you'll use the it's a thick bowl. It's a good. it's a bowl, and you boil the water, and you put the it stuff could. in there. Yeah, you know, I tell everybody, even if, even if you don't have a fancy setup, then you, and no, it's it's like, it's going to be between two to $300 to get yourself a vaginal steam sauna, and the last year, a lifetime, two to $300 investment for your vaginal mm-hmm. health, that's nothing compared to even going to the doctor, but um, you can always get like a pot and boil the herbs, and then you can put it on the, on the ground, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a little demonstration, so you guys can do it right now, so you just put your, put your pot on the ground, and, and then you, you just you just put your knees on either side of the pot like that. Like say that's your pot. You put your knees on either side of the pot, and you're steaming. You're doing a vaginal steam just like that. Yeah. So, you know everybody should. And then you would put like a, you know something to enclose it. To enclose it. Yeah. And it's you know, it can hurt your knees after. You know whatever. It's it's it will give you an idea of it. You know just be careful. Test the heat beforehand. But you know you can use if you can use Oops. peppermint. I didn't want to do that. Okay. You can use peppermint. You can use chamomile. You know, just even things, tea. You know, tea that somebody might have, you know, in the cupboard. You can go to the grocery store, go to the produce section. Usually there's rosemary or sage. You know, you can try any any herb. And then I make the herbal blends. Of course, the herbal blends I make, each herbal blend is tailored to the period. So okay. it's going to get the woman to that perfect period. Okay. You know, so... Any other questions before we close out? I think I'm supposed to be at a dinner. I think you're supposed to be at that dinner, too. Oh, let's go. (laughs) Oh, so we are at ShiftCon, which is a bloggers conference around um, holistic living and sustainability and wellness. And that's how we're able to collide in real time. And we found each other. So um, questions. Okay, Tisha says no questions. Uh, If you feel like your friend needs this, please share this. Um, my intention this year is to have more moments like this and and share and stuff like that in terms of self care um, for women and men because we when we talk about self care we never talk about that the other side of it men need self care too so actually men can steam I heard well that you know I was telling somebody <laughs> I didn't like know. before I was coming here I didn't or, before I went to go get my steam I was talking to this guy after this one workshop and I was like yeah I'm gonna get a steam he's like I was like well I'm about to and I whispered a vaginal steam and he's like oh I can't do that I was like and in my mind I was like well I think men should steam too I don't know how and so Okay, so for men, no, I don't, I don't, I have no experience with men steaming, but this is what I found. I think they still should steam. They do it if they have hemorrhoids. Oh, yeah, that would it, help. They, they, they rock back and hit the rectum, and then it also. But wouldn't it also help their testicles prostate. and yeah. prostate? Uh, so I don't know. What the, I don't know. That's a whole, we're, we're in a different zone. No, okay, no, so. No. Okay, anyways. So where okay. can the people find you? Steamychick.com. Okay. Really simple. She's Stimmy Chick on Instagram. Stimmy Chick on Instagram. Stimmy Chick on Facebook. Yeah. And Stimmychick.com. Okay. And then I have, I have. If you want to hear about other women's experiences with it, go to the blog, and you'll hear all the different women's experiences with using the vaginal steaming. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for taking this ride with us. Thank you. So I think we much. answered all your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think. Um, have a beautiful day. We are here in Irvine, California. Hashtag ShiftCon. Yes! <laughs>